Okie dokie, so we're at the end of the second of two very, very long days. Yes. At SAP TechEd, and I'm, it's Den here, and I'm filling in for John Reed, who is in Nashville, lucky fellow. Yeah. Um, what's your, what's, what's been top of mind for you, Dick, at this, at this last couple of days? Well, I mean, what was interesting was to sort of, I mean, if you take a look at their messaging, um, you had at the Safra, you had the intelligent enterprise, and it was pretty vague. I think at, at this time, at this ticket, you really start to look under the covers, and I think that is is interesting. Um, for example, you if you look at the intelligent um, enterprise, there are the the three layers, and the one which I thought was got more meat was there's one part which is regarding the use of um, AI. And for example, this is, we had um, some examples that were interesting. For example, the use of AI in integration to mm. improve mapping, yeah. or um, AI internally to look at the, the logs from the uh, cloud platform. So these are real practical examples of SAP using the technology internally, which is just sort of um, something that the practical usage of the stuff that we haven't seen before. So that was interesting. So, uh, j just when you say mapping, g g just explain a little bit well, more. Well, I mean, for example, um, what's interesting in terms of integration is that they had a tool which uses artificial intelligence to look through the mappings which, which customers have, have done, and then, of course, they're all anonymized, and makes suggestions um, if you have a new M integration to be able to perhaps map more efficiently, map more rapidly, and it's based on AI, which is, or machine learning, which is interesting. It's a new use case. I saw another example of that where machine learning was used to suggest, um, at the end of a business process, the, a, a, um, a bonus element for somebody. Right. Um, as a result of having done a certain level of work or whatever, it was kind of interesting in its own right. So, I mean, there are lots and lots of applications. There, but I think we're very early stages. This stuff's... It's, I mean, but, but there's, I mean, once you start looking at the potential, I think it's, it's interesting in that if you look at a cloud environment, there's so much information that is in there that you can exploit logs, what people are doing. Um, and, of course, once the information is anonymized, then it becomes very rich in terms of how you can use the information to mm. improve processes. And, I mean, the whole idea of the intelligent um, enterprise is that you have constant approve, um, improvement. And I think that's what you really see why it makes sense. Okay. There, were, there was one question that I never got to ask, and that is how are they going to monetize the APIs? Because... They're, 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 are you talking about ones from SAP? Are you talking about ones from well, the, the, the SAP, partners the, provide? The, no, the, the, well, both of them, really, isn't it? I mean, the ones that SAP provide, SAP, on the one hand, is saying that it wants to be open, but then it still has to monetize somewhere along the line. What will it actually do? Will it monetize the API itself, or will, it, or, or will something else happen? I mean, I'm not. I mean, aware uh, of what's going on there. It's no. more an indirect access sort of a thing, which well, is that's avoid. a whole new topic of, of its own. But it's but I mean, I mean, it's. I mean, as we we just had a meeting with um, Post NL for in Holland, and they were describing the importance of APIs in their work. And when you see that APIs are getting more and more important, mm. and of course, as you say, the one thing is that um, monetization of that mm. is important as well. The question is, when you have an API, is it for End users, is it for your customers? Mm. Um, and so I think that's a whole different um, argument or a different area that you have to take a look at in terms of what's your relationship to the people who are using the APIs. Um, and I think so, that's what's, what's, what's interesting. Sure. And, and so that leads to the, the next obvious question, which you've asked on a number of occasions. How are you going to manage complexity? Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's um, something that is, is not easy in terms of the more complex the process is, if you are using, like, cloud functions and you have five cloud functions that have to be in some sort of a, a transaction, how does that work if it's event-based? Things like that. And the more you start moving away from, I wouldn't call them trivial, but having a, a function post something to, to Slack is good, but that's not really... 
a more complex business process. I mean, in terms of extensibility, where do you want to put stuff? You want to put stuff in the cloud functions, event-based. You want to use um, the SDK from like S4, and I think that's something which um, they have to be SVS be really clear about. If a partner comes and says, "Okay, I have this business or a customer business requirement, what should I do?" And I mean, I think those standards have to be um, really important to make sure that people basically know where to put their solutions. But we don't have that at the moment, do we? Not really. I mean, it's, it's, it's getting better. They now have the cloud programming model, which helps. Mm. I mean, but as new technology comes down uh, and is moved into the cloud platform, the question is, how do I use it? It has to be more than just cool. I have to know what scenarios are best um, appropriate to use like cloud functions, things like that. I had a very good conversation with uh, DJ Adams who said that um, one of the difficulties that people face is we're giving them choice and it's yes. like well how do I make those choices exactly and he, and he, he then said to me he said I'm finding that uh, APM the application programming model is right. helping me because it's it, he described it as the golden pathway through right. which I can th through which I can thread myself and, and not have to worry too, too much. Right. That's especially, for example, I think it's, I think it's similar if you're talking about ABAP in the cloud and other programming languages. Yep. They both use the, the same basis, which is important. But, I mean, the question is, if you are doing, I always mention cloud functions because that's sort of what's the, the, the latest thing. But, I mean, does it fit there as well? I mean, what scenarios are appropriate for which environment? Um, and I think that's that's going to be a challenge. I mean, it's just too new, but I think SAP is aware of it as well. Um, and we had one meeting with the the, um, the team which is dealing with the extensibility framework, and that was also interesting, looking at how they're looking how they're um, looking at sort of the cloud functions and how they're using Kubernetes and things like that. So that's there's all these different moving moving parts as always, um, but I think it's getting a little bit cleaner. And what seems to have happened, I guess, in the, with, with all this, um, these new capabilities is that we have gone from a situation where I used to run this particular set of processes over here in ECC or S4, whatever it's called. Right. I used to have this other thing over here in CRM. I used to have this other thing over here in right. success factors. And I used to have this, you know, maybe I've got a little bit of a web shop somewhere and so on. Right. So, and all of those could run discreetly because they yes. didn't really touch each other in any right. meaningful way. Whereas what customers are now talking about is effectively an end-to-end, -end, well, they say supply chain, I mean value chain, end-to-end -end value right. chain, which we saw uh, articulated through that conversation with PostNL, right? right? All sorts of things going on there. That exposes the vulnerabilities, doesn't it, and the weaknesses well, of, it's, of these loosely coupled models. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, what, what it shows as well is that it's not, I mean, and I think SAP is aware of this, it's not a pure SAP world. Well, yeah, okay? yeah, yeah, yeah. I and I mean, and, and so, I mean, so that, if you look at the, the process, it's, <coughs> like you said, I mean, there is no longer the idea that a process is just uh, in a particular silo. Mm -hmm. As you start moving over these different silos and you start jumping between different cloud vendors, then it gets very difficult. But I mean, people. I mean, I think people who are doing this on a daily basis. I mean, they understand the complexity involved, not only in terms of developing this stuff, but in terms of monitoring and I mean, architecting that. it as well. Right. Yep. Right. And I mean, and I think that. And what was fascinating about talking to people from Post and all is how they do deal with like the APIs, because the API is, I mean, what is exposed the external APIs. Mm. Okay, and how you deal with versioning, how you deal with moving that to external customers. Mm. Um, mm. You know, I think they are really good use case for a customer um, really exploiting in, in, a, in a good good fashion um, the API management suite from um, SCP mm. Mm. because they're doing everything. They're using the, the developer um, the developer um, portal and then thresholding and then versioning and so that's how you really have to do it because you basically want to protect your applications which are behind the API gateway mm. and then they're, they're, they're using it and I think in a, in a correct fashion. Is, based on what you have seen, do you think that the SAP API management platform that they've got is, will work out to be the platform through which most APIs of will... Course. Yeah. 
Okay. I mean, because I mean, I went and saw one um, sort of um, cloud cloud platform. I think it was um, Direction. It was just a twenty minute presentation from um, the the cloud platform, and they said they had the number of, P of developers or developers who were using the API gateway, and it was an astounding number. Right. Um, I think it was fourteen thousand. I think fourteen thousand. So, wow, that is. A, I, I think. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was one one slide. It's but, a I mean, big so, number. But it's 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 a big number, and that's basically. I mean, how you protect your assets that are provided to external customers via APIs, mm. and that's that's critical. Um, and so that for me was sort of an interesting um, sort of an awareness that things are moving in that direction. And not only customers. I mean, just to look at all the APIs which are now available via the SaaS applications that SAP bought. Mm. There are a number, and what's also interesting in terms of, it's not only APIs now, mm. it's also the event-based. Mm. Mm. Um, mm. And that is something which people I mean, might not realize yet, is that all, like the um, S4 is also publishing events on the event bus that they have. Right. Okay, which is, Something which is which I've just seen at this show. So they're starting to, to sort of think about that there are different patterns in terms of architecture, in terms of cloud architecture, what you can do. And for example, when a business partner changes, mm. that's published as an event. Um, and so other people who are using PubSub can, for example, can become aware of that event. And it could be one person, it could be 50, it could be 300 people. Mm -hmm. And that's a very powerful model in terms of how you move information out to an unlimited number of partners. So, <clears throat> in this context, when you think about the world of developers as it relates to SAP, it seems to me that there's an awful lot more opportunity than perhaps even they realize yes. to, do, to do really, really interesting of and course. powerful things, right? Of course. And I mean, I mean, as we saw in um, Bjorn's in a conversation with Bjorn Gerke, or the, his keynote, I mean, ABAP, is there? I mean, as people should start. I mean, people should start looking at ABAP in the cloud as a way to sort of transition to this world. Mm. Um, and I think that is something that gets them into, I mean, into sort of this new development paradigm, which is the, the shift that they have to get used to. I think that last year, it would that to try and articulate that message last year would have been very very difficult because they right. just didn't have right. this. In the last year, they seem to have made significant progress. In all these areas, and it's not bait, so they're, and they're perfectly yes. willing to, they're perfectly open about the fact it's a journey and not a destination. Yes, exactly. that but it strikes me that, it, at least in the world of SAP, they've made an enormous amount of progress, and yes. the, and they are they are now a very very credible player in the game, in right. in ways that perhaps would not have been. Um, uh, Evident this time last year. Is, is, is that a fair assessment? Yeah, I mean, I think. I mean, what you see is that they're starting to establish patterns. Yeah. Um, and the patterns. I mean, you might see it right now in one application like S4, but once the patterns are established as a development paradigm, then you'll see it in Concur. Then you'll see it in Field Glass. And once you have that, then the goal of having these um, processes, which are above, I mean, the intelligent enterprise or the intelligent suite. Um, then it becomes much more possible if all these things have APS, if all these things have, have events. Um, and I think that's what's interesting. And I, I'm just thinking about our conversation with Tim Denikin and the, the S4 team about how they're looking at things like the ecosystem. And the ecosystem also has to be aware of these opportunities and these changes. Um, and they have to, be, to become aware of the new programming models. The only thing that uh, the only thing that left me with a question mark, and I'm glad that you mentioned their school there, is because it's not 100% clear to me that SAP has figured out how it will manage that ecosystem. Uh, because yeah, I mean, yeah. you, 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 they were very clear about the fact that you need to divide the ecosystem into several different parts. Right. You know, the big guys who are going to do the big stuff, that right. um, SAP itself, it's going to do certain stuff, and then this second layer or third layer rather of um, mid-sized and smaller um, consulting and development shops that are going to provide micro-vertical right. solutions, functions that would, can go across the board and all the rest of it. I think SAP will, if it does this right, will have a very interesting portfolio of solutions available right. to it. Right. I mean, the, it, it. SAP does not naturally um, naturally gravitate towards these smaller places, right? Because right. you know, it, it, 
big company likes big deals, but that's right. not the way life's going to be in the, in the future. The, the deal values will come as a result of volume right. or, or specificity in, right. in important processes. But SAP, and SAP already knows that it's not going to do it all, right? The right. question is, will it be able to orchestrate those that ecosystem in a coherent manner? That's the challenge that I would put to Yeah, them. but I think, I mean, I think there was a um, press release or a, um, a session from the guys from Beyond Technologies who used the SDK from S4 mm. to provide a new functionality. Um, and they're, a, they're not a huge SI, they're a smaller company. No, and, I mean, but Leo and his team are very, very well known to SAP, right? And yes. So he, 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 do, he had a shoe in, right, pretty much. Yeah, but I mean, it's an example of a smaller company being sort of on the cutting edge as well. It's, it's not Indeed. to say it's it's not only the huge SIs which have opportunities. It's the smaller frame sure. companies as well. Sure. Um, but we need a thousand beyond technologies, don't we? Yes. Okay. What do you think is the next challenge for them? Of course, the next year. What would you say, or what would you counsel them? Let's put it that way. I mean, I think the one thing is going to be they're 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 moving pretty pretty rapidly in terms of how. Iterative, they're developing new content for the various applications. It's bringing the ecosystem along. Yeah, I mean, I think that's there. I mean, that's always terms, been a problem. That's always I'm, been a problem. But I think they've they've gotten a lot more agile and a lot more a, a lot faster. Uh, and mm. I think the question is always: Are the developers, are the ecosystem, are can they can they catch up? Um, and I think that's that's going to be a challenge. And I mean, I think they also have to look beyond the traditional sort of SAP customer, I mean, new developers, are they coming into the system as well? Um, they need a reason to do that. Yes. Well, I mean, SAP customers, I mean, the, the existing base, customer base. Well, okay, so I, I, I came into this conference skeptical because of what I saw in the ecosystem and the resistance. Right. Having gone around the floor a couple of times having listened to you, listened to others, listened to Craig, listened to those guys who, who are inside that stuff, um, listened to Bjorn. I'm a lot more confident that this ecosystem of ABAPAs in particular right. will move forward. Right. And because there's a yes. tremendous amount of enthusiasm among the mentors, for instance, and they right. can carry that message into the ecosystem. Right. I mean, too. I think that's, I mean, I think people see a path that might not have been evident before. Mm -hmm. um, and the question is going to be whether they can keep these people enthused, whether they can move them sort of along the journey as well. Mm -hmm. But I think that's the most important thing, that there's not sort of a, a sort of a divided society in terms of the ecosystem. Absolutely. The ABAPers, they're the old school people, we don't need to deal with them, and then there's the new school. I mean. Developer is a developer. I mean, they're always wanting to do, do something new. I, d I don't, you know, I mean, SAP has had this concern over its head that, you know, it's not that cool and nobody's heard of them and why would developers come to them? I think that's actually the wrong way of looking at it because if I know anything about developers, at the end of the day, they want getting paid, right? Yeah. And, and they w and, and apart from, yes, they want to work for Google and yes, they want to work for Facebook, but you know what? Those guys pay pretty darn well. And of course you're going to stay with somebody who pays you well. Right. You can earn good money in the SAP community if you know what you're doing. No question right. about that. That's, that's absolutely not a problem. So yeah, from my perspective, I, mean, I can see how that, uh, that should be attractive. Yeah, but I mean, I think they also have to be aware that things are changing. I mean, oh, they sure. have to be. I mean, they have to be aware. They have to be able to, to work agilely and things like that, because I mean, this is something which, which we've seen for a long time. But it's getting more and more evident um, that things are are speeding up, and the customers expect it as well. Yeah, and none of us can keep up. It's 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 horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I think what's interesting is to try and figure out. I mean, SAP always wanted to sort of be on the uh, cutting edge. And now, once they get the APIs set up, once they get all the events firing, then you have the opportunity to really start doing something innovative. Um, and I think that's, it's, it's, it's definitely getting better. Right. They just need to surface some of this stuff so that people see it, and they need to make it self-evident, well, and I mean, a few it's, other things. It's, it's, it's more than people see it. I think they have to realize the uh, business relevance. Right. Um, because, just focusing on technology itself isn't going to do anyone any good. What is the, the business relevance? Yeah. I mean, and I think that's, I mean, we were talking about the uh, keynote, that it wasn't, that it was sort of 
um, business focused well, I mean, they have to have that as well. I mean, mm -hmm. because a business person has to say, okay, this is something that I want to have. This is my requirement. How you do it, that might be your choice, but what is the requirement? And that, I think, is something that we have to be aware of as well. A good thing to look forward to next year, I should think. Definitely. Okay.